hard too, huh? Yeah, it's on super hard. Well. Hello? What up, bro? You on two black brothers. What's going on, sir? Yeah, I just want to say first thing, man, appreciate having you on. You know, it's our third interview. Yeah, no, nah, you know, I know you you the veteran, bro. So I, when I see your name, it's just like, oh, nah, that's day one. So it's always love. All right, and then the um, I was kind of man, I was going through looking at all your stuff on YouTube. And some stuff I missed, so but I just want to talk about the first thing. Like, I think like you look at like Fight Club from two thousands. I think you kind of put in a whole new genre of hip hop. So what do you? How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I definitely didn't look at it like that, but. Being honest with myself, I definitely, as hindsight, realized, yes, baby, be quiet, daddy's on the phone. Okay. I definitely realized, like, that I kind of was a part of, you know, ushering in a new brand and, like, a new niche of hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what I'm talking about. But, like, you know, just... That part of it is definitely a refreshing thing to look back on, you know, as now as like the OG on some battle rap thing, you know what I mean? For sure. And then I was going to say, too, I noticed, like, so you got a lot of um, the rappers, the battle rappers that was in early 2000s, but they get back in and now, and they try to battle these newer rappers, and it don't work out for them. But I see, like, you, you kind of been standing around, kept doing it the whole time. So I say tell a lot of people like you. It's ain't. I don't think battle rap is something you can hop in and hop out. I think it's something you gotta keep working in and keep working. Hmm. Well, like I guess that's you know that's true and there's variation to that. Like I think it's a it's a certain pocket. Like for me, that I mean, just as a person, like a personality trait that I've always just been, in, you know, that type of person that. I need challenges sometimes to, you know, step up to the plate. So I think um, that was the whole draw with Battle Rap. That's the thing that attracted me to it, is that it puts you on the spot. It forces you to either be great or, or die. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, I think it's just something that's in me that is just, you know, it's not going nowhere for me. But I definitely understand that just like any sport, you know, if you don't do something for a while, you might, you know what I mean, have some rust. And it was just a blessing for me that you don't, you know, I think it worked the opposite with me. Like, all those years that I took off and all of the um, the people that kind of, you know, were benefiting off the work I put in, being that they weren't, you know, kind of paying the homage I felt that I deserved, it kind of made me angry. And so, like, you know, I had something to prove. So the performances that you see that, you know, people are like, yo, I never saw this type of Jones. They just don't really understand that that's how it always been. So, you know, it's, it's like that riding a bike thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you, when it's in you, it's just in you, I believe. You know what I mean? You just got to have the, the platform to, to bring it out. You know what I mean? And then what do you say was some of your uh, favorite battles? Like, you don't, they don't necessarily got to be you. It could be you or other battles. But what's some of your favorite battles you saw or you been in? Hold on one second, bro. Yeah. Love you. Two black right. brother. Um. Yeah, I'm on daddy. Daddy. Slow. Yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of my favorite. Uh. One of my favorite battles. Yeah. Honestly, this ill will battle that's about to drop April is probably my favorite battle right now. Hmm. Why are you saying that? Only because, like. Not only was, you know, he he's one of the battle rappers that I feel like are one of the biggest challenges to my style because one of the things that people have always said about me is like, well, not only, but lately, this whole new generation since I came back, a lot of people were acting like, oh, well, he doesn't have the, you know, he's not energetic and he's not performing at that crazy level. Like, I'm not jumping around and screaming and doing hypothetical gunshots or, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> whatever. So it's like, this was like a prime example of showing how it don't matter how animated, it don't matter how aggressive you come, this shit ain't going to be enough for Jones. Yeah, and I was even like, I was watching the old, the, the battle you did with Murder Mook, 
And I was telling my girl, I said, man, like, I was like, he had all these niggas with him. So, like, it's like shit like that. Like, they bring all their people with them and they like, ooh, ah. It's like a lot of extra shit when you doing that battle and shit you got to deal with. It ain't just you battling the dude sometimes, the whole environment and all that shit. So how you deal with that? Nah, it's crazy that you said that, but that's always how I looked at and approach battle rap in general. Like, battle rap is not a battle just between you and a person. Like, it's an energy battle. You're literally battling energies. You know what I'm saying? So you're literally battling the room. You're battling the crowd. You're battling yourself. You're battling your own insecurities and, you know, lack of confidence and all that. So it's really like when you tap into that part where, first of all, I want to give, you know, glory to God, you know what I'm saying, a long walk by like because I didn't know I could do any of this until I reached the point where I tapped into that, what they call God, God tier. Like I tapped into that level where it's not even me anymore. You yeah. Know what I'm just doing whatever I need to do to win. And that's what King Jones does. I just do whatever I gotta do to win. You I know, mean, what are you most proud of, like, so far in your career? The thing I'm most proud of is honestly my baby girl right now. Mm. But in terms of my career in music, I think um, if I had to say something that I'm the most proud of is probably just my influence on the culture, like most of the main thing that people do now, you know, all humbleness aside, like it kind of came to me. Like I was the first person I know of that was bringing actual personals, you know, with stories to battle raps. You know what I'm saying? I was the first person that I saw that was doing the slow talk flow where it don't even sound like you're rapping, it just sounds like you're talking. You know, or, you know, just certain mannerisms, like, I said, yo, you know, like, my man Blast, shout out to Phil Blast, like, he had to really convince me and tell me, like, bro, you made that up. And I was like, what? Like, really? He's like, dog, you don't remember? Like, you were in Fight Club and nobody, you, that's the way you got people to shut up. Yeah, like, what I'm saying, yo, man. I said, yo. <coughs> so... That's what every battle rapper damn near says before they rap now. So yeah, like, man. And I said I just remember I when I first came out. A lot of stuff that staple stuff now. So it's like I was in denial for a long time, but honestly, like you know, when I think about it and I see the growth of the culture, like I'm proud that I just had something to do with it. Honestly. Yeah, and I said you had a lot to do with it. Cause I said I remember when that Fight Club came out. That shit was crazy. You remember that shit, DJ Period? When it came out, yeah, I said I was looking. I would say I saw some. Uh, I was looking at some old videos. I saw this T-shirt you had on. You had is that own your own masters? You still like you still on that tip and everything? Like, what's the importance of owning your own masters? Man, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like in this era, that's the most important. And um, you know, I was raised Muslim. I was raised to you know, believe in self-sufficiency, you know what I'm saying? And um, I used to celebrate Kwanzaa and all that when I was done. And one of the um, principles is, you know, cooperative economics and also just um, self-sufficiency, being able to function without someone else's, you know, dictating what your direction is. So I think as artists and just as young black men in general, but we got to think more that way, which is that, you know, we always looking to get discovered by somebody else instead of, you know, just looking to be ourselves and let them discover us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we out here trying to get a deal still in 2019 when it's like it's shown us that the people who have been the most successful are the people that created their own situation. You know what I'm saying? And the JV couldn't get a deal. You know what I mean? That's the couldn't get a deal. You know what I mean? Baby, all these different, you know, people that are te technically the biggest moguls we've seen in, in the rap industry are people that did it themselves. And then once they started doing it, you know what I mean? They, they went and found some help to do it bigger. So I think um, 
that is real important, you know what I'm saying? Like to to just understand the value of being self sufficient and knowing that you really can do it. But um it's also a double edged sword, you know what I'm saying? Because those that know my career, know my history, know that I could and should be at a way higher level. But it's because of the fact that I really haven't had good help this whole time. Yeah, I was, I was actually so, gonna ask I was actually going to ask you that because I was like, I was actually, you know, you know, I've been knowing you from a long time. So I was saying, like, I remember you were signed with DTP. And then I was even listening to your freestyle and you were saying you signed a $5 million deal. So I was like, shit, that mean he at least got half. So I was like, do you look at your career and you was like, man, I should have did this different, this different, or you everything is right? <clears throat> I mean, I was saying goals. I was like, it's 2020. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's a lot of things that I think I could have did better and that, um, you know, I wish I was educated on or had just an OG in the game to kind of tell me, yeah, this is how this goes. But, you know, I got a father, you know what I mean? I have some real nigga cousins and family members that like to scare me the right way in life. But that's a different thing when you talk about the uncharted terrain of being, a, you know, in the music business. So I never had nobody to give me that game. You know what I'm saying? Like most of the people that was supposedly in my corner was really just out to out to get me and trying to get something from me. So I had to learn it the hard way. And um, I think, you know, for those young artists that's out here really trying to make a name for themselves and trying to come up in the game, don't underestimate the value of team and the help and people that actually believe in you. But like, that's going to be the difference. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was turning away help back in the day. And I think that's one of the main issues that, you know, people don't understand when it comes to me. You need people that believe in you actively, that are willing to go out there, sacrifice their own life, their own freedom or their own whatever, to see you make it. And if you don't have nobody like that, chances are you're not going to make it. <coughs> and then and I would say, too, like, when I think about it, too, you kind of remind me of Nas because, um, like, I hear a lot of your interviews and I hear you say, like, you be like, man, I'm a street dude, I'm a street dude, but then you're very smart. Like, I, I hear, I was like, man, this dude knows some shit. Like, I just hear how you rap and what you be talking about. I'm like, you smart, so you just remind me of Nas, so I just wanted you to talk about, like, some of the books you read and stuff. Well, first of all, thank you, because Nas, to me, is, that's my favorite artist, you know, Austin Rap, so, you know, and honestly, that was who, like, you know, made me. That was the first rapper that I could say I was really, like, a fan of. Like, and I felt like, damn, I wish I thought like this guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, like, I think I'm going to try to stop saying that, too. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, my wife says that, too. And there's certain things that, like, I don't really want to represent myself as, like, I'm just some sweet guy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I am from the culture and, like, it's an urban thing, you know what I'm saying? This whole art form, you know, like, it started on the corner. You know what I mean? It started, you know, from fighting. And, you know, well, you can't beat me. You know what I mean? It started from that spirit of competition and then realizing that there's better ways to confuse stuff. There's better ways to represent yourself and make people respect you than just using your hands or using a gun or selling drugs or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the culture kind of gave me a voice and gave me a new life. So, like, I definitely, you know, try to personify that. But um, I think more so for me, it's, it's like, at this point, it's really about making smarter business decisions. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's weird and ironic that now we're in this era where people want to see you be a street guy in the face. They want to see you pulling out all your AKs on, in the video and just waving them at the camera. They want to see some, you know, interview with on Vlad where you're talking about the body you just beat. Yeah. They want to, you know, be able to really feel like you're watching you risk your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's a new thing. Like, that's where people feel more connected to you because they're like, oh, this nigga really don't care about his life. Oh, okay, cool. I'll support him then. Yeah, I actually, um, I didn't even see, I didn't, I don't know where I was, but that Matt Hoffa shit, I did not see. 
I thought that was the most sucky shit ever. But then I saw the uh I saw Vlad I saw the video he talking about it, but I was just like, Wow, I was like these cats doing shit like that now? I just thought I was like, That's crazy. Like I just like shit is just I crazy. Mean, let's just- but then I saw, I saw, that's what I said, I saw you talking about it and they was like, like they, like you said, they wanted you like show some shit, like show you beating them ass on the tape or some shit. You yeah, can't do that. Pull up and shoot the guy on, on camera, tape. You know, on FaceTime and say you ain't shit. Like, you know, you ain't shit. Like, they want you to, and, and this was to me was the wake up call. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to now have, you know, bigger cuts to me. I'm grateful to now, like, have a bigger call to live for. You know what I'm saying? Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Okay. Say hi, world. Hi, bye. Okay. All right. Say hi, world. Hi, world. All right. But, like, it's like, um, I don't understand the mind state of men that have children. And still are out here playing around with other grown men like you can't die. Like, I don't understand that logic. Because if you care about your life, you care about your family, then why do you put yourself in positions where you're forcing somebody to have to do something to you? Like, I don't understand that. So when I wound up in that situation, it just, to me, was like a reminder of why this is not the sweets. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, it's that shit now. So I got to understand that, like, I can't treat this the same way I would some street shit, which definitely is very frustrating. You know what I'm saying? It's very annoying. When I saw that person, I popped on him. That's, that's what I know. I'm not going to talk about it on the internet, but do whatever. When I see you, I'm going to get off on you as best as I can when I go into jail or whatever. So that's what happens. What happens right after that? This person goes straight to the internet, make drugs and put detail in the whole situation, but making up lies. And, but at the same time, you're calling behind the scenes, talking about, we got kids, and I don't want to piece it up. So to me, it's like, it's very frustrating dealing with rappers that play street nigga games, but behind the scenes, they're really snitches. And they're really like, you know, homosexual fantasy having niggas like you are obsessed with another man yep. and for years you be so obsessed with another man that little things piss you off because you really want a nigga to be your friend yeah that's why you know people would tell me that about you but i didn't keep it i didn't see it and i you know i mean i was naive to it i didn't really realize the value of that shit so you know without wasting any more time or seconds that's just what the yeah, that's why I feel like even with like what I'm doing, I just feel like I'm just trying to show people like, hey, this is the real hip hop. Because I feel like you got a lot of people now, like even with Six Nine, you got a lot of kids that's gonna follow Six Nine, and then they Six going nine. what he doing. Six nine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But you got a lot of people that they think that's hip hop, and I'm like, first off, I don't even think he should be a part of this culture in the first place. So I feel like like people like me. We got to do a better job than take, we got to not even let these people get in the game, but we so quick to let everybody get in the game. So even like Vlad and them, like, we can, we quick to let the Catch Me Outside girls get in the game and all them people. It's like, we got to pretty. Yo, bro, yo, bro, I heard somebody say something. This was years ago. But just like what you said, like, it's like, it's like That's what I'm saying. It's almost like it's almost like if you got a bunch of people smoking K two, and then you show up like, nigga, this is runs, this is pink runs eighty five. You know that was grown in the middle of some greenhouse and fucking you know wherever. Like people really would look at you and be like, well, what's the difference, man? Just give me some K two. Mm. And it's because of the fact that we are allowing 
suckers to live. We're acting like reality doesn't matter anymore. And it's because we got so many human beings that are living fake lives. They're living through their phone. They're living through their, you know what I'm saying? The, the idea of what someone thinks about them, not about the truth of what they're doing with their life. And that changes things, you know what I'm saying? So even though it doesn't change the bottom line, which you got a sucker going to be a sucker. And if you got light on a sucker, eventually suck shit going to come out. You're going to see the shit come out. Yeah. So the sick nine shit is no exception. Eventually, I knew that shit was going to crumble. I knew that niggas was just jacking. Ain't no real gangster going to fucking put rainbow shit in their hair, man. <laughs> That's just not a thing a gangster does, bro. Period. You know what I'm saying? This is a nigga that was chasing clout from the beginning. His first case, when he was with the underage girl. What did he get a case for? Chasing clout. He was trying to do a viral video there, trying to go viral with some chick dancing around and doing the camera. Like, yeah, yeah, nigga, we live. It's the same syndrome. It's the same sickness. These young people thinking attention is money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's one thing I like about. As long as we keep acting like that's the case, we're gonna have a lost generation, man. Like my my hope is to share my life share my journey, share my pain, and show people what the truth is in terms of, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to be some fake gangster nigga. You don't have to join the Crips or the Bloods or some shit just to be a reputable, powerful guy. It's not what you got to do, bro. You be yourself. And these niggas are suckers out here, all jacking that shit, followers, because they're too scared to stand up as men and be their own person. Yeah. Facts. And ain't no, yeah, ain't nobody gonna pull them. Ain't, ain't nobody gonna pull them to the side either, man. Like, yo, what up, man? This DJ Period. But uh, yeah, ain't nobody gonna pull them to the side either, cause like, like they say, man, the game, the game is really is so not told, and I, I, I think that's real life. So like, I think the G just watch, sit back and watch them do the dumb shit and let them fall on their ass. That shit is unfortunate, bro. Like, and, and as black people, the fact that we still thinking like that in 2019 after we went through 500 years of slavery is disgusting yeah. man why the fuck would the game not be sold but but not be told but sold when you see somebody making millions of dollars and they got a family what what is wrong with us as black people that you don't say hey man you know what let me help you out so you don't ruin your life and 10 other motherfuckers cause now we got 10 other people's lives ruined cause of this little snitch yeah, but I'm saying, so like this is what this is what makes me angry because as black people, you know what I'm saying? Like niggas is out here worrying about how they look. But to me, niggas are suckers, bro. Anybody that really feels like that and sits there and you're rich and you're a millionaire and you talking about what a game is to be sold, got to be told. Like you ain't gonna tell somebody that you see is headed down a path of destruction, how not to fail. Yeah. You're not gonna tell them how not to die. Especially your people. That make you. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially your people. Yeah, we, yeah, we got that's, 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 that's our problem now. That's what I realize now, man. But that's the thing too, though. But I was like, man, that's a, that's see, see the thing is now it's like okay, you black, but it's like man, it's like everybody ain't. It's like man, you gotta like weed out the black people because you got like coons and all that shit too. So it's like you got black people that throw you on the bus like they ain't black. We talking about fighting. I mean, the saddest part is, though, some of the most racist people in America is black. Yeah. 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 I didn't got, I didn't got, you know, harassed by the cops mad times, and they actually knew who I was. And I thought that was going to help me. Instead, it was the opposite. They didn't want to be the guy that said they locked you up. Yeah, man, it's crazy. So what, what what are you working on right now? You've got any um, projects you're working on right now? Anything you want us to uh, tell the listeners to check out? Absolutely. I got Serious Business 3, which is out right now. Um, I got um, a new project called The Hard Way, and I'm dropping the same day as this um, Bill Will Battle. It's dropping in April. I don't know if it's going to be the same day, but I'm going to just say release day of April 14th. Um, and uh, the Ill Will Battle drops an RBE. That's classic, man. I ain't, you know, I'm not trying to gas it or nothing, but me being honest, that's probably my most classic battle since Jim. So, mm -hmm. like, I think it's definitely, you know, a good testament of 
you know, just the um, the combination, you know what I'm saying? Like, and um, I got also a film, it's called Life is Serious, no, excuse me, Life is Serious, the film we're already out, you can check that now. But the new film is called The Club, and it's featuring um, J.D. Williams, I met Bodhi from The Wire, uh, Sample, DJ Radio, DJ Gary Joyce, Slack Thriller, um, you know, just a, just a bunch of industry taste makers and, and people that's actually from the New York club scene. And the whole concept is basically um, just shed light on the truth of how people act in the club and the truth of who they are in real life. It's just another one of those, you know, testimonials to reality versus fantasy. So I'm thinking about dropping that like any day now, but honestly, I just try to use the battles as like promotion, you know what I'm saying? So that I can actually get more viewership and stuff on the on the videos and things I'm doing. And also, um, make sure you check out Get Out Your Own Way. That was the, that was the song you were talking about where I said, I mean, that, that got signed and poof, right to the That was, um, I shot that video on Alcatraz and, um, you know, it's kind of like a testament to like my true story, you know what I'm saying? Well, get Out Your Own Way, that's, you know, what most of us need to do and just being honest as an artist and as a man, that's that's what my issue is and that's what is I think is gonna propel me to the next level is just getting out my own way. Yeah, I'm saying it seemed like you be uh producing a lot of your stuff now. I mean even back in the day I remember you were saying you, you filmed the Life is Serious too, right? Yeah, definitely. So how yeah, long you, you been how long you been doing yeah, so you um yeah, that's cool man. You still I see you still doing all that. You be do, filming and everything, producing your own videos and stuff. I mean, honestly, they say the necessity is the mother of invention, man. So you never know what you can do until you gotta do that shit. You know what I'm saying? That young nigga booming yeah, is really hype. Yeah, that young nigga booming the one the film cause it was like kinda like a selfie one, how you was filming that, that was tight. And I was like, that was Thank dope. You, Thank you, bro. That was another, like, me just, you know, I had a chance to um, go to Jamaica, and I had some people that was just really showing love down there. So I was like, man, I'm just, you know, you're going to make this a video. So I was damn near, <laughs> I was in a horse in the water trying to Yeah, she was dope. And rap at the same time. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, that shit was dope. God is good, man. God is good. It came out dope. And, like, honestly, I just want to, I want to give more credit to God because a lot of this is stuff that I didn't think I could do. You know what I mean? And I just tried it. I believed in it. And it just happened. So that's where I'm trying to stay at mentally. You know what I'm saying? And just get thanks and continue to just go all out. All right, man. I want to say thank you for coming through, chilling with us today on Just Two Black Brothers. Yo, good luck, bro. So, you know, you family, man, because you were there since the beginning, man. So I always value that. Um, to everybody listening, make sure you go to seriousjones.net.com. Also, I'm coming out with a book, too, which is uh, called The Art of Word Book. And this is going to be, you know, the, basically the life and times of a battle rapper. You know what I'm saying? And the things that I went through that, you know, made me choose this path. So, um... That's going to be available also in April. And um, just follow me on all my socials, man. I need all the love I can get. Um, my name is just S-E-R-I-U-S, no O is Serious Jones. And also um, subscribe to my YouTube, man, YouTube Serious Jones. And I'm out here, man. No love. Yes, I ain't going nowhere, man. So we're going to be doing another interview in the, in the future. Dude, I appreciate you, bro. All right, so we about to go into your songs, man. We about to play that young nigga boom, and then we gonna play that uh, get out your way. I like that one too. My God. All right, we out, bro. Love you, out, man. One hundred. Yeah. Joints. Wow, wow. Oh, it's good, be How you feeling, bro? You already know that. There you are, relax in the house. Yeah. Bone some. Pies and Kush. Nice, I'm going with nice. you. Oh, man, you know, I'm just trying to move these mountains, man. You know what I'm saying? I already know them expect some big, exotic, crazy, mad thing from you, you know, dog. For real. It's gotta be real. Yeah. That me, I say. Yeah. You can't wait no more. You have to do it yourself, you know, dog. Facts. Right. Bum. Daddy. On a uh, On a bow. Hey.
on a boat, blowing loud out of Cuban. With some Cuban, pull up on a the block, they like fuck you in. Young nigga booming, 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 young nigga booming. Young nigga booming. If you ain't getting to it, fuck you doing, fuck you doing. Check the news, that's the reason for the shooting. shooting. Young niggas booming, young nigga booming, yeah, young nigga booming, young nigga booming, booming. No bullshit, been round nicks since Pat Ewing About 14 around dope fiends with that trap booming Ain't want to, but it seems like the whole Ave use In the jungle so long, it's weird now, I gotta act human It ain't just me, it's a routine when you live in the Sphinx All you things copping and bagging and rearing You watch for the coppers, you stack as they free Cause they get you the system, it starts with probation Then you locked up in the cage, man I swear I don't feel free unless I'm out on a vacation on a boat, blowing loud out of Cuban. With some Cuban. Pull up on a the block, they like fuck you in. Young nigga booming. 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 If you ain't getting to it, fuck you doing. Fuck you doing. Check the news, that's the reason for the shooting. Shooting. Young niggas booming. Young nigga booming. Young nigga booming. Young nigga booming. Young nigga booming. Kush be all in the air You smell it mixed with the jealousy No juvenile me in there Too young to even catch felonies And they ain't tryna win no spelling bees But they'll leave you like the letter T That's why I'm on cruise like Penelope Cause I ain't tryna be no killer, please Don't make me do it, don't make me do it These babies that shoot you for love And I ain't talking Cupid See, just cause you young That don't mean that you gotta be stupid Cause next time you come up Could be on the news clip And now On a boat, blowing loud Out of Cupid uh, so cool. Pull up on a the block They like fuck you in Young nigga booming 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 If you ain't getting to it Fuck you doing Fuck you doing Check the news That's the reason for the shooting
But all you know is the strings Well, nigga, that's not what's up For a long time, we designed no spring chicken They tried to do me dirty like a dope shit Bitch, ain't got a gold mine in my head I know she dig it Man, niggas, I ain't trying to eat them And got to get out my own way Switch up, I to get out my own Yo, that was, that was some both of them was though. Yeah, okay, that was a tight, man. I said, I interviewed him like, I think the first time I interviewed him was like 2008. It was like right after he got through, because uh, he had a deal. That's why I was talking about in the interview. He had that deal. He signed with 5 million with Ludacris with DTP. Yeah. But then he didn't work out, but I'm like, shit. I mean, he still, he's got like half of that shit though. Oh, how much? Well, he signed half a mil? He signed for 5 mil. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he on. Yeah, but that was like back in the day though. That was like, I interviewed him like 2008, so that was like 2006 when he signed that deal. Oh, and he was doing yeah. all that Fight Club shit in 2000. Then like 2006, yeah. he signed that deal with Ludacris. But they, they, I think they making a lot of money now, huh? Them battle rappers. Yeah, but I interviewed. I think I interviewed him by 2008, but then I think I interviewed him again like 2017. Then right now. So. It'd be cool. I like why I keep interviewing people and they still doing it because, you know, a lot of people quit. Shit. Yeah. Nah, they be, yeah, they be, they be, the game be getting to him. But he got, he got longevity in it. I said, that was a good interview. He was saying a lot of this shit, huh? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was talking to the little dumb niggas out there. <laughs> yeah, man, because I said, like, that's what I'm saying, man, that 6 9 shit crazy, man. Like, and we got, like, but I'm saying, that, that's like, for whoever listening, man, like, they can't be, you can't even, like I said, you got to look at him from the gate. Like I said, to me, if you got a kid and your kid fall for him, fall for that dude and think he real, that means you feel it as a parent. Your kid should look at him and be like, man, that dude a clown. I ain't looking at this shit. That's how they should look at him. Like, they should already know he's some clown, he a clown. Like, ain't nobody should look at him and be like, he's some real. That's why, like, you see how wrestling and music and rap is, like, coming together now? Because both of them, to me, both of them is fake, man. That's why that shit is, like... Wrestling fake and rap is fake. You niggas ain't real and rap like that. All them people be lying and you faking. Mm-hmm. Like some of them be real, but the ones you be that be real, people don't think they real. But the ones that the, fake, no, the ones that be real don't be that good either. Yeah, but I'm saying the ones that real, that, that's the ones that people don't li- listen to. But the ones that fake, that's the ones you like. Yeah. You saw how Rick Ross coming out with the book, but he gonna talk about when he was CEO and shit too. Man, I don't fool with that nigga. I don't like. I, don't, I mean, yeah, you know, I'll take that back. I, I like Rick Ross. He be making some hits though. That's, that music yeah. be tight, but I don't know. That's why I said to me, I, to me, it's just in my head now, man. I was like, I just look at rap like wrestling, man. Like wrestling is like it ain't real like that. So I just always like rap like that. Like man, these dudes ain't especially because you know I interview so many rappers. So like, man, these niggas regular ass niggas, man. There ain't nobody. <clears throat> niggas, but yeah, he's regular. Man, like I said, E40 said that a long time ago, man. We ain't really doing this shit. We doing these records. Yeah, these regular ass niggas need to be nervous when I'm about to call them and shit. I'm like, you nervous? What the fuck wrong with you? Oh. Uh, I'm saying, man, that shit regular, man. I don't be looking at these, man. That shit, like, they regular ass dudes, man. They just rap. Like you said, like, shit, this is regular. But, man, you gotta work on your bars, man. It seems like you was nervous tonight. Nah, yeah, I ain't ready. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, uh, who was over there, man? I heard somebody freestyling the other day. But one of the mama rappers, though, but he kept saying, turn the beat on. <laughs> but that shit was already on. He just couldn't do that. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Man, that one thing, it was like that dude, he was like, she was rapping. Who? Man, it was a black dude. She was like, you gonna spit something? But he, he just froze up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A dude at, at the TV show. But no, that's, that's the shit your brother be saying. Uh-huh. Dude, that's the shit your brother was saying. He's like, I don't be all right. You know what I'm saying? You got it right. Like, like Jay Z, cause I guess they get it from Jay Z, cause Jay Z was saying he don't write, but he didn't Lil write. Wayne but saying he, too, huh? Lil Wayne be saying that. Yeah, too. but that, but what did I tell you? That they're, they're saying they're not writing on paper, but they're writing the rhyme in their mind. They're like basically like they they'll they'll like throughout the day they'll be like they'll come up with a verse, then they'll add another verse, then they'll add another verse, and they just keep these verses in their head all day. Then they'll rap. So it's really like they write, they just ain't writing on paper. Yeah, my brother, yeah, my brother, I just gotta, I gotta stay on him, though. But I'm saying, people, but these, these new cats, like, he's trying to say, same thing, new cats thinking that these cats saying they just ain't writing. It's just they writing well, they in their mind. they believe in it. 
Yeah, it's like they're, not, they're writing in their mind. They're not. They're writing in their mind. They're writing. They're just not writing on paper. But they're writing because they said even Jay Z said that he just keep that saying. He just keep adding and keep adding throughout the day. Then by the time he gets to the studio, he got the song because he did. Yeah, nah, man. I, I, I used to always be like, man, Jay, Jay ain't freestyle that. Yeah, he said he didn't freestyle. I'm saying he just don't write it, but he, I'm saying he, he writing it in his mind. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you could, you could like wake up in the morning. You could be like, just thinking up, just waking up in the morning. God, thank God. You can, you can say that when you wake up, and then you could be driving to work. I don't like, know, that's but all, they that's kind of really odd. played out over a whole day. Huh? Yeah, then you can just go, go to work. By the time you get to work, no barking from the dog. And then when you at lunch. No harm. Then you got a whole song. By the time you get home, you just keep doing that. That's what they was doing. But people be thinking like they saying they ain't writing nothing. No, nigga, they they doing something. But, but I even I even be thinking them freestyles that be on the radio, like on on phone flex, be written raps too. Man, all but, that shit be written, man. Come on, man. Like th- come on. If you think if you know you finna be on on fucking like whatever show, you, you ain't think, coming off the head. Yeah, hell no. You, hell no. Why would you? If you know you finna be on there, all these people finna listen to you. You finna come up with some shit. So. It, maybe like, yeah, come maybe on, man. like, uh, back when, uh, what, what, uh, you think Hell Real shit was written when he freestyled over the phone on that Diplomat album? Yeah, it was written. He, he was writing it in jail. That nigga said, and about then the even time like I, all these battle rappers, they're not, they're not, um, freestyling that nah, shit. Nah, I know battle rapping ain't freestyling. Them niggas, that shit be so hard. Cause you gotta practice that shit. They be in the mirror practicing that shit and all that shit. Oh. Uh. But yeah, that's what I said about Serious Jones, man. I ain't even trying to, like, I, that's what I said, like, bro. I ain't trying to be on no gassing people up and just saying shit to say shit, but like for real, he kind of started that shit when you look at it. Yeah, nah, you know what? I, I was gonna say something too because I was like, on that, even with that move battle, niggas was trying to say he lost because he was being different. He didn't he lose, wasn't, man. He wasn't rapping like a like 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 a regular. Battle nah, rapper. Was, Mook, Mook was, just had all his people. I was like, man, Mook yeah, had hella people. Man, I, him. I saw that on that other battle. They was like, oh man, y'all, we 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 got you in New York now because I guess. They be doing like home team shit, like oh, this the home team, yeah. you the away team. I was like, Mook had hella people with him. I was like, cause I, I was I was watching last night with my girl. I was like, man, because he was like, I was like, how many people that nigga got with him? Because that nigga had like he had at least about ten, yeah, like fifty people probably. No, he had it was at least like ten, and then every time he was saying something, they was like ooh ooh ooh, like every time. And then yeah. Sirius Jones only had one person with him, so it's like but shit. He was fit- and yeah. he was spitting, his shit was just different, man. It was funny. But I'm saying, like, if you only got one person with you, and you ain't going to have all, but sometimes, even though he only had one person with him, they were still saying, ooh. So I was like, yeah. that's how you know his shit was tight. If they saying all this shit, he ain't got nobody with him. But I was like, Murder Mook had hella people with him. So every time he was saying something, they was like, ooh, ah, ooh. So I was like, but you got to worry about that shit when you battle too. You got to worry about the crowd, how many people in the crowd, all that shit. They be hating like that. No, I agree. I, I, I mean, I'm starting to like it more now, though. Yeah, that shit hard. You know what I'm saying? But you got, I said, you think about it, that shit started like, I mean, you always had, like, I've been asking about them, but I forgot. But you always had, like, you know, you always had battles back in the day, like, straight up battles. But I'm saying, as far as, like, that smack and that URL shit, that shit started in 2000, like, in Fight Club and Smack. But that was 2000 when that shit started. And I said, he was like, one, it was him, it was uh, Murder Mook, it was uh, J Mills. It was Reed Dollars. I remember Reed Dollars. Was, you remember Reed Dollars? I remember, yeah, I remember my first. I think my first battle I watched was Jay Mills and Moot. Yeah, that shit, man. Jay Mills was tight, but I said Jay Mills. That's why I, I was kind of talking about him earlier, but I just didn't say his name. You want to say his name? Yeah, yeah. But like I, the new I, I, old I, rapper I, trying to come back with the new ones. Yeah, but I was like, he got his ass eight up, boy. We gotta have him on the show. Be like, bring that ass here, boy. <laughs> Uh, that's what happened, huh? You like, yeah. what happened with this? Bring that ass here, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, nah, and he went in that shit like he was going to win, too. I was like, damn. Uh, he got it. <laughs> I, was, I was like, man, I was, cause I was always like, I don't know, man. That's my boy, man. I, I really like, like, he's one of my favorites, but I was always thinking, like, he still had it. But I just in that shit, I was like, ooh. He got it at eight up, boy. Was he like, was just rapping. He wasn't even really doing nothing. It was like, all right, he just going to try to spit. I was like, no, nigga, that shit ain't. No, I said, Sirius Jones, I was saying, you got to give him credit because I'm like, he ain't. He wasn't like it wasn't like he he did that shit and went away and came back. Like you could say all the like Cassidy, he went away and came back, but Sirius Jones yeah. was always still doing it the whole time. So that's what I'm saying. That's why he's still kind of like he's still relevant in it, like really relevant. Like he's still battling and still winning. Like you heard that shit when we first started. That shit was hard. All that shit he was saying, that shit was hard as fuck. I was like, damn. I don't know if I played all these songs on the show. Did I play all these songs already? You played three. You played three. 
Yeah, I think we out then and shit. You don't want to freestyle no more. No, I got, I'm, okay. I'm, re- I'm ready next week for him. Oh, you going to write? I'm a, yeah, I'm about to write something since that's, what, since that's what they really do. Yeah, but we out. You got anything you want to listen to with? Shit, we did two hours today. We did? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, that's why I said I already knew something on his phone. I was like, it had to be his phone. That's why I said, man, people, no, I was trying to tell you earlier, man, like, this is, this is music, but it's music business, so, man, artists got to be about their business, so artists ain't about their business. It's a reason they ain't successful, man. The successful ones about their business, man. So uh-huh. they, they gonna let you know if something's going on, they gonna hit you up. They ain't gonna just, just gonna hit you up, hit you up two days later with some shit, what happened. That ain't how shit go. Nah, I, I, all I got, all I want to leave them with is, uh, thank, thank, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Have a good night. You sound like Russell Simmons and shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm probably Martin and shit. I'm Martin now and shit. But yeah, we out, man. Like yeah, I said, uh, Popal ticket at myshopify.com, man. Go go get some merch on there, man. We need support, shit. Uh-huh. And y'all can take pictures and we'll be sharing them and shit. But we out on on, on on the best show on the planet, man. This is the best Bang. show on the planet. This two black brothers. Yo, man, this is two black brothers. This is two black brothers. Yo, man, this is two black brothers. This is two black brothers. Alright, I'm about to go down a little bit. My life is like a browser with 25 open tabs. I have kind of a constantly plugged in thing. Any interruption could jeopardize the whole operation. So I got my internet service from AT&T. Because their customers rated their service number one in reliability over cable. For $40 a month, I can get up to 100 megabits per second internet, so I can stay up to date on the latest stuff going on in my world. It's soothing to know AT&T internet is rated number one in reliability over cable. It helps me maintain my low stress thing. AT&T Internet customers rank their service number one in reliability over cable. Switch and get up to 100 megabits per second for $40 a month. Limited availability may not be available in your area. Check eligibility at att.com slash internet. AT&T, more for your thing. That's our thing. New approved customers only. Includes internet plans 10 to 100 megabits per second. Early termination fee and other charges and restrictions apply. Speeds not guaranteed and may vary. Claim based on 2018 ACSI survey of customers rating their own internet provider's performance and reliability of speed and service consistency. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. When it comes to safety, nothing is more important than your vehicle's brakes. If it's hard to stop or you hear squealing or grinding noises during braking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts. You'll find the brake parts you need from trusted brands like BrakeBest and BrakeBest Select at everyday low prices. Play it safe with brakes from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs>